Like, that'd be a great yes. Should we have a? I want to do a sweater comparison. I'll oh. go first. Okay, please so mine do. Is, mine is cats wearing capes uh, flying through space chasing after presents. Oh, so that's what it was. Because did you did you see your your tweet, sir? Yes. And and did it make you laugh? I don't know. I have a social media manager, so. Oh, oh, oh! You're that tier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I pay a guy minimum wage to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, that's that's nice. Um, what happened on the the tweet? <laughs> You were in about one. I have no idea. I, I I know I did a little video of my sweater. Yeah. So no one could see it. At no all. one could see it. No, it was like 140 p. Oh, potato quality. It was. It was. It was. Yeah. Yes. It, wow. I, I thought, I'm watching I thought, it now. Yeah. <laughs> that listen, is compressed. Can you hear yourself? Oh, that's me. Uh, that's my normal voice without <laughs> microphone amplification. Yeah. Here, here, you can see. Yeah, I thought this was all planned. I was like, oh. That, like, this is like some meta Christmas joke? Yeah. I was like, well, maybe he's just prepping us for, you know, the kind of internet we experienced last year. He's just trying yeah, not to is... set bad expectations. That's okay, what I thought. Okay, so I'm going to have yeah. a chat well, with my social media. <laughs> yeah okay. it's, it's that minimum wage by the way i'm kidding yeah maybe i should maybe i should give him a raise i gave him a cheese box for oh. christmas oh yeah so i i was hoping i would have time to go and get cheese along with you because i'm sure you have cheese okay oh, oh. okay, <laughs> okay. Know me. So. Know me so well. <laughs> yes and and it's and I, I, I just didn't have the opportunity. It's, been... it's fine. It's fine. I brought enough cheese to share. Okay. Well, chat would love that. It's we an 8-bit sweater. Yeah. That's what chat just said here. 8-bit sweater. I love it. It lights up too, but uh, I don't have the batteries for it. It takes those little coin batteries. Oh my gosh. Does it really? I feel like that would... Yeah. Yeah. Oh. There's like little lights, LEDs like scattered throughout. It's just, it was $19.99. And where did you get it from? I got a TJ Maxx. See? Okay. See? Yeah. That's good. That's where you, yeah. TJ Maxx is, I mean, it's like a classier thrift store. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a very high-end thrift store. Like, you, it's like a thrift store where you don't feel dirty when you walk through it. Yeah. 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 I got this one off of, like, uh, some internet, like, thrift store. But it's the same one I've been wearing. You, you, you can't see it. Oh, was that because... thread up? Uh, the, the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That one. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That one. Hold on, I got to change my light. I'm way too bright. It's okay. Oh, we were oh. trying to, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty bright today too. Um, like my pale winter skin is <laughs> not absorbing the wavelengths <laughs> like it does in the summer. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty much this whole year, huh? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> right? What a year. What a year. Absolutely. Wow. And here's my fear, if you want to know, that everybody's going to think Dying that 20... Dying of coronavirus? No, no, I'm actually not scared okay. of that at all. I just simply don't want to infect other people. But, but I'm scared that people are going to put... Just like there's this new video game that came out that's called Cyberpunk 2077 or something. And everybody was like... Yes, I've heard of for, it. Yeah, yeah, see. Uh, it's, it's, everybody knows about it. Everybody's been prepping for it for years. And, yes. And then when you do that, if it like has any kind of flaws you suddenly hate it and that's what i'm worried uh, about with with this this 2021 is that we're like oh my god 2020 was so bad and then what if what if 2021 what if? right what if it's not what that if 21 is just like kind of yeah. okay yeah like if even that you know yeah, yeah just like kind of average like it's you know the way it could be a plus one is it's not 2020 i guess what if that's the case? Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, yeah, a buggy 2021. Yeah, I'm just kind of, just, uh, uh, yeah, trying not to yeah. build up expectations. I'm, I'm seeing some, uh, some shade thrown about my backdrop here. Mm -mm. So saying, you see that? You see this? It's very uh, Midwestern Slater, mall. USA. Oh, that's no, Slater. No, no, no. That's this Slater. That's a chalkboard. That's a chalkboard. That's. Do you guys remember when they actually used to use these? Look at that. Look at that. 
I love it. I absolutely that's a, love that's it. That's a real deal. Yeah. Yeah. Slater, did you know that? You had, to, with all the stuff we watch of with Dr. Paul, sometimes you see stuff back there in his videos. Everybody's mind. Sometimes. Right now. Yeah, yeah. 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 My, my kids will like draw all over it and like I reward them with good drawings <laughs> by keeping it in the videos. <laughs> Uh, that's a yeah that's an awesome backdrop and he doesn't even have to stand up and and you know get all yeah like actually we're just like oh <laughs> yeah. you know for those days when you want to be a scientist and you're just like can I get oh. oh oh gosh why doesn't this problem just solve itself oh just it's put... very it's very covid lockdown style like show up in my pjs it's so true here in my lazy boy you don't even have to try anymore i know yeah i know like i should do like space radio videos where i'm like okay let me draw something here yeah uh, <laughs> just give me a nice spiral <laughs> galaxy you know there you go okay okay hold on. <laughs> last time i drew for one of my videos years ago uh -huh. i tried to draw spiral galaxies oh yeah they're hard when the when the video came out, I realized I drew swastikas. Oh yeah. See, that's, yeah. that's, I was, I was actually thinking, uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh yeah. that's because people do the arms. Yeah. I, I, so I, I'm know, like, I know, oh, I know exactly what you mean. That's uh, spiral yeah. arms. We're mm -hmm. all good. And everyone's like, uh, Paul, uh, Dr. Paul, are, <clears throat> are you trying to tell us something? <laughs> and like what? That I'm a what, terrible, what do you mean? It's terrible so, drawing. It's, it's, I can't draw. <laughs> I was doing a, a video. I my series for Discovery uh, Digital Space mm -hmm. Out. Mm -hmm. We film right here, and the directors on Skype and the producers on Skype. And they're like, "Paul, could you try drawing this?" I'm like, "Sure." I draw, and they're like, "You know what? Just leave the chalkboard blank, Paul." You know it's what? good. We're like this, it's good. It's good. Do you want you just erase that, and we'll just do a reset here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna actually see if I can do my my cam so you can see. I can do the virtual cam. I'm just being lazy right now. Let's see. Yeah, it's just. See, look. There you, you are. Yeah, and you can see when I have them on my background and everything. Look at that, super Ooh, fancy. Ooh, a nice Aurora. I know. So that's Kat Machen. That's her art. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, I've yeah. seen her on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, she's all over the place. Uh, but yeah, I was like, this is pretty Christmassy. It's the Auroras. Very Christmassy. Yeah. That's where Santa lives. Yeah. Exactly. I was like, She's, you know, yeah, yeah. You find Santa here, <laughs> right there, right there. Just follow the Northern Lights. That's right. Yep. And we're covering a portion of them, but we're just one of the lights. You know, today. you still get. Yeah, exactly. We Northern and Southern <laughs> Borealis right here. <laughs> and it actually works for the configuration of my whole thing up on this monitor, which no one else can see. He's the northern, yeah, so I'm it's the all, southern. Yeah. And it works. It works. My advisor, my graduate advisor was also named Paul, Paul Ricker. He's mm -hmm. a professor at University of Illinois. So we were North Paul and South Paul. Mm. Yeah, this is what physicists do in their free time. They come <sighs> up with really bad jokes. But that's amazing. Like, that's South amazing. Paul. Yeah. <sighs> And you wonder what your like federal tax dollars are going towards, you know, that this. slice that goes to federal re that research is going to people sitting around in offices coming up with bad jokes. Bad jokes. Yeah. Well, that's my stream, to be honest. Oh, Everybody. Yes. In my, yeah, they do it. They do it to me all the time. And then it just turns into dad jokes. Uh, central here. Um, have you seen? I don't, have you noticed my mug? So I've started uh, selling merch. Yes. Like okay. That. Okay. I've seen. Can you read that? Yeah. Yeah. If uh, if it's interesting, it's probably wrong. That's that's a Paulism. Uh, there. You have another thing. I saw another thing. There was it a shirt. Was I've it got a, shirt? a t shirt. Yes. The t shirt says the exact. Not I, very creative. It's, yeah, it's no. shirt with words. Yeah, but I kind of want one. So probably gonna get well, one. Let's make it happen. I, I yeah. Yeah, no, and that's awesome. So where can people find your merch, though? Is it just on your website? PMSutter.com slash store. Oh, okay. So there's a whole store portion? Now? Store, oh, yeah. Or... It's autograph books. It's the mugs. It's the shirts. Okay. So we have your store, right? This is, or not your store, your site, your wonderful site. There I am. Here I am. Yeah, this is you. Making faces. Where's the store? Uh, oh, you know what? It's not linked at the top. That's my problem. Yeah, you gotta gotta put a thing up here for store. Wait, wait, wait! Should I fix this in real time? You could fix it in real time. We've got time. I'm, I can because I can elevate it to the here. yeah. If, yeah. If you give me like fifteen seconds, oh, it's, it's maybe more. Yeah, I'll I'll give you probably about a solid two minutes. But uh, yeah, 
That's that'd Dude, be good. Refresh. Refresh. Oh my. Well, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I might look get the mug. The mug's good. I the drink a lot funny. of coffee on here. The mug is funny. The mug would, yeah. Yep. And then look at these. I have both of these. I have this one right here because, again, I was going through and I was like, you can see how much this has actually been pretty weathered. The 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 pages are. <laughs> this book dog eared, is... well loved, yeah. <laughs> well loved, <laughs> well loved. Um, like, oh yeah, tell me more about supermassive black holes, Paul. Yeah, I want to know more about death in space, sir. <laughs> this is a oh, this great is, book, this, though. This is your bedtime story for your kid. Yeah, this is super cozy. They're like. Yeah, like so tuck in and so yeah, so let's talk about gamma rays and mm, how they can melt your flesh. Stellar mass black holes. Let's mm, talk mm. about death by stellar mass black hole. Everybody's worried about the big ones, but you know, those smaller ones, man. The smaller ones are nasty. They're, They're nastier, terrible. I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it's I you know, I'd rather go the way of a, a million billion times the sun mass of the sun uh absolutely then then these stellar mass no, no yeah because no you can actually cross the event horizon yeah. you get to see what's happening yeah. at the event horizon you actually get to be inside of a black hole for a little bit before you're obliterated absolutely yeah and I'll and you know but i gotta say my favorite ones are the ones that are more like so like the uh solar flares or the cmes uh coronal mass ejections mm. for anybody that coronal cmes you know because you're super cool yeah you just, just we acronym everything CMEs like gut or a toe S. <laughs> a toe, toe. Uh, yeah the theory of everything yeah gut. A gut yeah grand unified i can't believe this stuff i know that physics come up with man but it works it works the one thing that didn't sense, work the one thing that didn't work is the gcco the gravitationally completely collapsed objects that we yeah that was, didn't take off no it that didn't. didn't take off uh-uh uh, they they what, there wasn't there something like the extended object or gravitationally something of dark energy the geodes that there was something really bad with that one too um it was a bad one it was yeah that one got nixed too yeah uh there's steve oh steve are this <laughs> 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 some amateur astronomers noticed some aurora that were a little weird mm-hmm they were like differently colored, coming in different patterns and coming at different times. And they called him Steve, just like Steve. There's always and a Steve. It's just Steve. Like, hey, check out Steve. And then NASA backronymed it. Oh. So now Steve stands for something. Oh, well, hmm. Yeah, Steve now stands for... Strong thermal emission velocity enhancement. You know, say that at a party and watch yourself get escorted out. Wow. That's what I'm saying. I, you know, some of these things I think about where I'm like, I'd be, that'd be really cool to learn about and then, you know, talk about with other people. And then I realize, like, in no setting other than these little interactions with my pals here, you know, including yeah. yourself, would this be an interesting thing? Yeah, it's like, it's because <laughs> sometimes I get invited to parties once. <laughs> and and then we like oh wow paul what do you do i'm like i'm an astrophysicist i write books and i host tv shows they're like wow so yeah so like do you teach and stuff <laughs> no no i do research i write books and cool so um, come here often so, yeah exactly so did you try the the bacon wrap scallops, those are like really good. Really like, good. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people yeah. don't know what to Mm-mm. to to go how to go from there. They don't. They don't. No, and that's how always... do people react when you say you're a Twitch streamer? Oh, it's terrible. Like so first and foremost, nobody first okay, so first it's what's Twitch? And then I have to what's go Twitch? I have to go through that whole thing of like, well, it's like YouTube, but it's live. Is that like, Parkinson's? This, this, this yeah. Is like, oh, wow. Like at Parkinson's advocate. Yeah, so. pretty much. So I have to use YouTube to explain Twitch. And then that makes me realize, right. okay, so what I'm doing is very small, but it's okay. That's that's my outreach. I'm just now getting an actual demographic of how limited it is. But okay, fine. Um, 
And then, I mean, that's that's always good. But I mean, I mean, it's good to know. And then after that, then then if they have heard of it, so this is the other way that this can go. We right. can have a whole like yes or no graph going here. So if they have heard of it, then they're like, oh. So you get paid to just to, be on the stream like, for most to, for men. And then that gets a little awkward. I say, no, I do science communication. Yeah. 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 So it, it's, it's awkward. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very awkward, uh, it's, it's very awkward. Cause I mean, Twitch is not really, they're not very, uh, supportive of, of like this kind of content right right you know it's it's not it's a not huge, making the big bucks right it's not a huge money maker um and yeah so so it's yeah it's just it's, it's so weird it's so so it's, it's very odd like you're a niche of a niche but yeah. you're very very large but with like a certain right very like specific slice of yeah. the world population yeah and even in that case i'm still really really small right even even on yes. twitch like I'm pretty small. And and the funny thing about it is I actually don't even say that I stream on Twitch anymore. I've stopped outright saying it because mm -hmm. of how awkward and uncomfortable it became when people realized, oh, yeah, I know Twitch. And I was like, great, That's here that we thing. go. That's yeah. yeah. Yeah, here we go. So I just say that uh, I'm a science communicator and I live stream on the internet. How does that go? How does that work out for you? A little bit better. I feel like I get a little bit more respect, a little bit. A little bit. Because they know the word science, communicator, and internet. Yes. And so that yeah. must mean you're doing something. Yes. But yeah. you could probably just say, I'm an internet science on the communicator. <laughs> be like, oh, I'm a communicator more. on the internet for science. That would work too, actually. That would actually yeah, be pretty good. Would. Yeah. That. Uh, now just say I'm, a, oh yeah, no, that's, yeah. I mean, pretty much, right? So that's, you can read my chat, right? No, that's what I say. Mm-hmm. Um, like, what does that mean? Right. Well, it means I get up in front of people and yep, turn around. I have a blackboard myself, but I it's for $1 different purposes. At a time. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you think of the? Oh, okay. So we're getting into questions already. Hold on, Let's real do quick. It, yeah. But wait, wait, wait. I have a thing. So a yesterday thing. we were we were talking about things, um, and it, it was really weird. As, as is your want. Right, right, right. So zero, save that question. Uh, actually, well, the answer is I have no idea. Okay. I don't know. From from Sorry, a, a PhD, seven. by the way, people get really yeah, bothered if I say that. I guess if an actual PhD says it, then it's a little bit more. Can you just say it one more time, please? Doctor just of philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah my my diploma is actually right here should i like hold it up next to me as i talk yeah no i usually keep mine behind my chair so i can just do a smooth roll back and be like oh look smooth oh Same. yeah just like and you don't point Ooh. to it you don't gesture to it right you're right you, but you very just like you just lean, lean back, back as you think and it becomes right. very evident right you're like, let me ponder mm, this. Let me think about let that. Let me draw on my mm. skills and expertise. Yes. That I have acquired. Yes. Yes. That's good. Yes, I believe I have the answer. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so we were talking in my chat yesterday, it just randomly came up, about dying in space. And I was like, all right, so you guys are a yep. day early, um, by the way. And, right on time. Right. <laughs> And, and actually CG already said this earlier, uh, we were talking, so someone was like, well, you know, I hear, you know, you just freeze to death in space. Space is really cold. And that's when I threw the curveball of being like, well, space in and of itself doesn't actually have a temperature in and of itself. <sighs> right. It's, mm. I mean, you have the, you have the temperature of the CMB, right? That's uh, the cosmic microwave exactly. battery. Exactly. You have exactly. that. Exactly. So but go on. And the CMB is soaking all of space. So right. what I really, there can be all sorts of temperatures in space. Like if you are within the orbit of the earth mm -hmm. and you're out there in the vacuum, you won't freeze to death. Right. You will never freeze because the sun light is hot enough, is intense enough to melt solid ice into liquid water. So it's hot enough to do that. So so there, the temperature of space will be like room temperature. Yeah. But if you're to go out 
way far away in the middle of yeah, nowhere. Let's, let's like put far you, no- yeah, put you by that, that, you know, what is it? 2.7 uh, Kelvin? Let's just, let's just put you over there. Yes. Just so so we're going to go in the middle of like the Bode's void. Right. We're going to be here away from any stars. You will be receiving a bath of radiation called mm-hmm. the cosmic microwave background that's left over from the earliest moments of the universe. The Big Bang. The Big Bang, as we like to call it. Mm-hmm. And it, all this radiation will constantly be pouring onto you, so you won't be able to cool below that intensity. And so that CMB will keep you at a temperature at like 2.5 Kelvin. Right, right. Yes. Yeah, because and so we, that's yeah, like you don't freeze close instantly. enough to calling it. Yeah, you won't freeze instantly. It'll and take you a couple this, hours. Yeah, people think that it, it, because, I mean, you don't freeze that instantly because of the heat. The heat transfer doesn't happen um, that, instantly. That, yeah, yeah, that fast from like radiation alone. Exactly. And, and honestly, water is like the most annoying thing to change temperature. It is like, think of how long it takes to boil a pot of water. Right. Right. It takes forever because water has this incredibly high latent heat. It takes forever to, for all the molecules in water to be like, they'll get irritated and hot yeah, and hot excited. and hot. And then yeah. finally they'll be like, <laughs> okay, fine, I'll be a gas. But like, you know, it's like trying to get a kid to the school bus. It's mm-hmm. just like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then they finally go. Yeah. Uh, this happens in, re- in reverse when you're trying to go from liquid to solid. solid. And it's like, no, I'm not going to, mm-hmm. nope, Mm-mm. not going to do it. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Okay, fine. I'll do it. And then, and so it takes, you have to remove enormous amounts of energy yep. to turn water, uh, liquid water from a liquid into a solid. And for a human body, you're just radiating. We radiate at around a hundred Watts. Uh-huh. So like an old school incandescent light bulb. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's how much thermal energy we release through radiation. And that takes a couple hours. Yeah. To, to freeze you up. So you'll die way before that. Right, right, right. And so my point was, though, space in and of itself, just space, the vacuum of space, doesn't have a temperature. Because temperature, and this is where people right. like got really upset. They're like, well, no, okay. I heard that it is, it is, you know, there's 7.2 or 2.7 Kelvin. And it's, you know, I, I learned this and I was like, no, that's the temperature of the uh the cosmic CMB. microwave background yes. yeah so that's that's different but um i didn't even really go into it. at that point i was like all right i don't think anybody's getting i'm talking about thermodynamics now in a vacuum right and that's that's right. because you know for for one of the two or two uh, two out of the actual three so uh convection and conduction yeah you require actual matter exactly you gotta touch something right for so, conduction or yeah convection and work. i was just throwing people out there and saying like in space in the vacuum just what space is intrinsically it, just space not talking about nothing right, right it's nothing so and that's where i feel like a lot of i was like we'll just wait for tomorrow and you guys can hear this from someone else because i feel like no one really believed me because they're like well i learned yeah, in school from and someone with a phd like they put it on my book <laughs> it's, cover. it's actually i'm seeing that too so it's not just on his copy. It's on yeah, mine as it's well. like I penciled in with a Sharpie. <laughs> PhD, you dingbat. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was something because, you know, and then talking about like, well, someone said, well, if you go out and you're, you know, I mean, this is all dependent on if you have a spacesuit or not, right? Of, of how things would happen. Yes. But wouldn't it be likely, and, and again, I'm just going to say, you know, I've, wouldn't it be likely that you'd have more issues with, you know, decompression? Decompression is not necessarily an issue on its own either. Really? Really, because um, your skin is really good at keeping your insides on the inside of you. Oh, well, I was just talking about like so, bubbles building up inside tissue and blood and then causing uh, yeah, like, blood clots. Yeah, so there's going to be and... like that narcosis stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be evapor- uh, evaporative cooling and crystallization of like the oils and yeah. sweat on your yeah. skin, which is going to hurt you. You are you will swell up a little. It's called ebolism. Yes. Which is different than embolism. It, totally different. Uh, totally different. Very but different. But both can happen with decompression side effects. Yes. Um, the biggest problem is lack of oxygen. Yeah. It's that, that That's oxygen. It. It, it. It will kill you in a couple minutes. Yeah. You'll lose consciousness in a matter of seconds. And you'll just fall asleep and you'll never wake up. 
you'll fall asleep and never wake up. But if you are recovered in those couple of minutes, you can be yeah. brought back and they can fix all the skin stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, because I think people think of like classic horror movies where, yeah. you know, like people like explode. And so when I was talking about, you know, decompression issues, I was talking about more like the nitrogen bubbles building up in tissues or building yeah. up in the bloodstream, causing blood clots or bruising of the skin, like you were just talking yeah, about. It's Not nasty. like you're, yeah, yeah, it's super something that you, I, I don't think I'd, you know, I, I don't think I've ever asked you. Maybe I have, but you know, it's been 10 years since we've done a annual uh, Xmas special, right? So it has. What, what? We're so young then. I know. So what, out of the ones you listed, I mean, you list really good ones. Or is there anyone you didn't list? Yeah, because oh. the whole book, the whole book is just an excuse to talk about cool astrophysics. It's, it's true. That's really all. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, the the whole conceit of the book was what's a way I can talk about all this cool stuff going on and, and have cool uh, the, pictures too. Right. Cause like you actually very cool pictures. You actually there's, have cool, there's some very yeah. pretty pictures. You have like, Orion. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my God. Same okay. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Co- okay. Dr. Paul, this is crab, crab nebula right here. Okay. Nebula. <laughs> That's, yeah. We got, we got, look at that. That magnetar has got some heartburn <laughs> right there. <laughs> Is this like oh, a this is like a Cygnus X one situation here? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. There's a Cygnus X one, and then there's our old friend, the black hole, the accretion. Look at disc. that! Yeah, woo, 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 woo. shooting that out nice this like jet. cool lasery thing. Oh gosh, wow, space! Yeah, that's all in the book. Like he puts that right in the middle, so that it's kind of like the carrot. So if you made it, that oh far, yeah, because I know people pick up the book like. This looks interesting. They're Barnes and Noble, and that's what they sound like. And uh-huh. they flip through and like, oh look, they're cool <laughs> pictures. I'm totally gonna buy this. Who's this guy? Paul M. Suter. Okay. <laughs> Suter. <laughs> Paul <smart>. M. Suter. <laughs> yeah. My name. Uh, it's it, I get called Suter all the time. How? Yeah. Okay. Wow. But my grandfather would always say, "It's butter, like butter, but with an S." I, I, I like it. Who doesn't like pictures? I know they're, they're really good ones too. But yeah, so what's your favorite though? Or not, oh God, that's, a, let's read, okay. What's your favorite way to die? <laughs> I'm going to let you just go with that one. What's your favorite way to die in space, Dr. Paul? Uh, a super massive black hole. Totally. Yeah, because you get to see, uh, we, we, yeah. You get to see the event horizon and there's all this talk about black hole singularities and we don't know what's happening in the center, which is true. Uh, no one ever says but that, actually. They say that they do know what's going on in the singularity in fair. my chat. Oh, my god! Yeah, in my chat, they say they do know and that uh, I'm a bad science communicator for not entertaining the... All these, yeah. Yes. So go on. Um, <laughs> but you do get to cross through the event horizon. And we have no idea what's going on at the event horizon either. Right. And you actually get to pass through that and take some measurements. You wouldn't get to tell anybody else because you would be inside of a black hole. Mm -hmm. But you would get to see it for yourself, which is pretty cool. I'll take that. Yeah, dying in a supermassive library. That's what Interstellar has, you believe. Yes. I remember that scene. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is... And the fifth force of nature is love. Oh, God. How did you feel about that? that? No, honestly. We were missing it the whole time because we're like, you know, we, we thought we had it nailed with electromagnetism Psh, and weird. gravity yeah. and strong nuclear and weak nuclear. Weak, yeah, no. But we didn't measure love. Yeah. Why Oops. do neutrinos have mass? Love. Love. What's the explanation for quantum gravity? Love. Love. Yes. Yeah. Why is there more matter than antimatter? Oh. Love. Love. Yeah. Love. Yeah. Just ignore <gasps> how Annihilation didn't go the way we thought it should, but love. Love. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> let me see. That movie, it was, it was fine. Yeah, it was good. It was interesting. Mm-hmm. It got kind of lame at the end, I suppose. I, that's your, yep, exactly. It's uh, one of those things where uh, I just, at the end, I was like, all right, we, we didn't need to do this. Yeah. Did we really need to go here? They like, did time dilation so well. 
too. That was brilliant about it the movie. Was and so Kip Thorne. Good. Yeah, Kip Thorne. Kip Thorne, Nobel Prize winner, Nobel Prize winner. He was the science consultant for that movie. Yeah. Because he knows a thing or two about black holes, I guess. And yeah, he said like they they, they really worked with him to uh, get the time dilation right. And when they're down on that big wavy planet, there's like a certain, there's like a clock ticking. Yeah. And like every time it ticks is like one month yep. for the astronaut that was up. Like they did it like very, very cool. It was that, and that's where I thought it was brilliant. I was like, okay, this is good. Cause this is, it, it, they, you know, I know they were trying to like really tug on the heartstrings, like really go mm-hmm. after the pathos of all of it with like the oh, yeah. love thing but i was like you know what with interstellar travel you don't need to do that because it's already kind of it's really cool but there's already tragedy yeah. like they were showing that several times over right yeah. just with space and time like it's you know if you have humans yeah. on earth it's it's you know it's yeah, that's that's it's, it's it's just gonna happen although they tried it with ad astra and i haven't watched i have it, not it. seen terrible. it I, same I here. I've heard it's terrible. And yeah, my chat suggested it every now and again. But I've also had people that are in here that are like, yeah, don't waste your time, Sky. Don't, don't wait. Uh, do you mind if I cut some cheese? I was, you know, just go for it. Because what cheese are you oh, cutting? Um, wow. So can I give a shout out to my uh, cheese please. sponsor for Space Radio? Please. <laughs> wait, I, you know, we, uh, we heard a... about this and we all went to the yes. site too domscheese.com d-o-m-s cheese.com they're a local cheese shop in connecticut uh they import from all over and they sponsor space radio by giving me cheese every single week wait do they 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 ship though they do ship so so on the website it doesn't directly say i'm I'm trying to i'm asking them to put like please Please put that up there instead of shop online Um, and pick up in the store because i'm not gonna go into the store because i don't live there and also rona uh, but they do ship. I shipped uh, some cheese boxes to my team, which is all over the U.S., and they all got cheese box gifts. So they do ship, but you just have to call them or email them, and you can get, like, one of those boxes delivered to your door. Okay. I want, Look at that. Aren't I, they cute? I, Yeah, and this is where I wish I would have just done this before because I would have ordered from them. Yeah. They're in there. Amazing. So last night they gave me, uh, this is a cheese called formage. Okay. Well, I thought that's, that sounds it's a, redundant. It's a pun. <laughs> okay. F-O-U-R-M-A-G-E. Formage because it contains four different kinds of milk. Oh, it's this one's a Gouda. It's a form of Gouda, but it has four different kinds of milk and it is, it is amazing. Well, it's a. This looks amazing. Have you? Did you? Do you see this on my screen right now? Oh yeah, I'm what? also eating it right now. Yeah, I know, and I hate you for it. See, this is what I knew would happen, guys. Every hey, you want time, these? you oh, know. These? Yeah, just. You know. like, we should do one of those like <laughs> internet tricks where you have a. Bag, and, <laughs> and then like I'm gonna have like a crumbled up piece of paper. <laughs> 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 just like something super stupid. Oh, that looks so good. Buffalo milk. <sighs> Buffalo milk. So it's like eating uh, like feta, gouda, and mozzarella at the same time. Okay. It goes good with a it rose. Is so good. Michael, Michael, you're in here. Michael, taking notes. Michael, you remember Michael? You met Michael at the. I've um, met Michael. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's from Holland. Is it that actually from a buffalo? Yes, Guppy Shark. It is you from a buffalo's teeth i might actually this might be my christmas gift to myself do it do you have a code you just call them up uh do i have a code like that's that the other thing i need i, I need can to help work on you out with time. okay because yeah but right now just order and they'll probably think like some rando from colorado is ordering they probably think it has to do with me oh good good okay okay at least there's that I, I don't have any other sponsorships. We need to really fix that. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I don't know who's going to sponsor a Twitch streamer, Dr. Paul. <laughs> a science Twitch streamer. Um, at that. Yeah. But no, wait, there was a good question, though. And that uh, oh. that was, well, I mean, there's been, I'm sure there's been some that we've missed because uh, you just keep eating We're your cheese. It's cheese. fine. I see you in my peripheral and 
I'm not bothered at all. Yeah, I just, I know, I get it. Do you have the cheese knives that, do you have the, God bless it. Look at that. Look at that. Still got them, still, still rocking them. Good, good. So Michael asked, uh, does anyone have any idea what the subjective time from the event horizon to the singularity or sp- spaghettification? Yes. So the subjective time, like the time you care about, like, say you cross the event horizon of a black hole Mm -hmm. you're on your way to the singularity inside of a black hole you will hit the singularity in a finite amount of time and the time you care about is like your personal time the time on your wristwatch we call this time in physics we have a special word for it oh we call this proper time oh indeed Proper time is the time according to the uh, local reference frame of the traveler themselves Okay. So you can calculate what the proper time is for trajectories going from the event horizon to the singularity. For a super massive black hole, like Sagittarius A star, the one in the center of the Milky Way, Mm -hmm. it's like seven seconds. For smaller stellar mass black holes, it's in the microseconds. Oh, yeah. That's why those are just no bueno. And there's a whole chapter in this book about stellar mass black holes. And it turns out, uh, you also asked about spaghettification. That's where the tidal forces become so strong that you get ripped apart. Yeah. No matter the size of the black hole, what matters is how close you get to the singularity. Right. For a stellar mass black hole, the event horizon is, sorry, I'm uh, It's okay. It's just masticating on some cheese. Right. Uh, The event horizon is like right here by the singularity. And so you don't even have to reach the event horizon before the the gravitational effects are so strong that you get ripped apart. For a supermassive black hole, the event horizon is way far away from the singularity. That's why you can cross the event horizon before you hit the singularity. And it turns out for like every known substance, like the strongest material ever conceivable. Mm Mm-hmm you have until you're about one tenth of a second away from the singularity before you get ripped apart. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. That's the closest you can get to a singularity is, is one tenth of a second away. So for the people in here that might be like, what the heck is the singularity? Did you see that catch right there? I did a really good job right there. Hey, nice one. Yeah. So what the what the Hollywood is a singularity. Yeah. What is the singularity? Like, what is what we don't is, know. OK, well, OK. So what do we think we know, but we actually <laughs> don't know? The singularity is the name we give to the center of a black hole. And as far as we know, mm-hmm. it is a point of infinite density it is where matter has been crunched down into an infinitely tiny point, like a literal geometric point. It takes up no volume in space whatsoever. It is a puncture in space time. It's also wrong. Like we know that's not correct. We know that there is something else happening at the center of a black hole. We just don't know what. Yeah, because the mathematics never checks out there. Exactly, because yeah. everything just blows up to infinity, infinity. all the time. Infinity. Infinity. And beyond. Yeah, and beyond. Infinity is not a very comfortable term um, Mm -hmm. in mathematics and in astrophysics. And, uh, yep. No, it's telling you that you're doing something wrong. Yeah, it just means you just can't throw in an infinity and be like, well, my job is done here. All right. Like, here he is. Just like, (laughs) oh, I don't know. Uh, You know what? Just do an infinity. (laughs) It's fine. Leave it. figure it it out after (laughs) years. Um, and so with this, so do you do you, for, and this is something that it's kind of weird. Cause I, I think a lot of people, it, it kind of, so black holes are, are, are spherical. Uh, if they're rotating, they if can they're get rotate, around the right. Earth. They can get oblate, right. Mm-hmm. More of the, mm-hmm. the chub chub that, that like, uh, the cute chub chub. Like, like Saturn. Saturn or Jupiter. Yeah. Saturn so chubby, like chubby cheeks. Yeah. Like. Just this cute oblate. But even though it's really massive, so it's hard for me to yeah. feel like I'm talking down to something that way out <laughs> masses Earth, but it's fine. Um, so I seem to remember that the that if the universe was a little more dense, it would be inside its own event horizon. Is that correct, Dr. Paul? Well, 
there's this interesting coincidence. <sighs> For black holes, there's this relationship oh. that you can define between uh, the mass of the black hole and the radius of the event horizon. Mm -hmm. So if you know the mass of the black hole, you know how big its event horizon is and vice versa. This is, comes from general relativity. It's uh, just a very clear cut equation. If you take the mass of the universe and ask, gee, if you were to make the universe, take all the stuff in the universe and crunch it down into a singularity, how big would its event horizon be? The answer is the size of the observable universe. Okay. The reason, yeah. So it's the reason for that is pure mathematical coincidence. Mm. There's no deeper connection there. The reason there's a coincidence is when you're studying black holes, you're looking at a system that is uh, spherically symmetric. There's a bunch of stuff on the inside and you're trying to figure out the, the radius. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at the universe, you're looking at a system that is spherically symmetric and there's a bunch of stuff on the inside and you're trying to figure out the radius. It turns out that because you're studying a very similar kind of system, the mathematics of general relativity gives you the same kinds of equations, but there is no uh, like deeper meaning uh -huh. to that that coincidence. Yeah, but but I'm sure you can find YouTube videos where they are raking in the money, saying there is so many reasons why this happens. And the there are so hats. <laughs> many like bad science YouTube. Videos I know, and out I there. I Even I feel like bad. I get that here. That's like the. That's that's what You're I. You're the bring clearing in. house. For but no, I don't get to even clear YouTube. it. Like they they think they know. Right. You just watch, and then it's yeah. it's rough out there. And then there's a lot of science videos too, and a lot of hosts and YouTube videos and presenters that. Like read a Wikipedia article Ugh. and then assume that they understand a topic. And I've seen, I've seen videos and I never want to knock like amateur science communicators because oh, sure. the more people communicate science, the better. Right. But are you sure you want to talk about quantum field theory? Right. Don't based do Based on the Wikipedia article that you just read. Right. No. So that's, and I always tell people that like, people are like, well, can we talk about quantum mechanics or like even, even QFT, you know? And I'm like, it's not really something kind of no actually like because the things yeah. that yeah, i basically know no. right you know like yeah, the things i know I, I i don't i don't even feel comfortable in speaking about right because yeah yeah it might not be like it, it i just don't if, if it, you don't understand it it's hard, really hard to teach it yes and also like when you uh, and I can see, and the reason I make this criticism is because I watch these videos and I see the mistakes they make because they don't understand the topic. Right. And you know, it's I'm so like, clear. oh, uh, actually, Wikipedia was wrong in that paragraph, but now <laughs> you're just wrong because you just read the Wikipedia article. Yeah. Or like you didn't connect these two topics together uh, or, or you misunderstood this because you missed this connection over here. And it's like, it takes a lot of, bravery and i i applaud you for it to say when you don't know what the answer is and and not be willing to talk about it because it's so easy because like well i i read that i'd like to present to you my you know my thoughts on quantum field theory and and just do it and rake in hundreds of thousands of views right and like no one's there to to call you out or fact check yeah, and, and that's just it. Like, it, I feel like uh, the big test of understanding something is being able to convey it in a manner mm -hmm. that makes sense. I feel like that's the science communicators, like, that's that's our mission, right? Yes. And, and and also be correct. Yeah, but, but that's what I mean. Like, you know, be correct. Uh, yeah, because that's true. Because if you, you can understand something, but then it not be accurate. Yeah, and that's why these channels are big, because they yeah. have great visuals, compelling narrative, good mm -hmm. storylines. And they're understandable. Right. And I also get quantum field theory is a giant topic. You're never going to address it properly in a 30 minute video. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But even the choices of simple simplifications you make matter. Right. Right. Yeah. And I just, I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't feel like 
there's so many areas of astrophysics um and this branches out into it for sure even you know the the realm of theory and it just like there's no i don't have time to sit down and be like i'm gonna just dedicate myself to qft yeah you know and so i understand (sighs) i have limitations and i'm very comfortable i'd rather say i don't know than act like i do know yep Exactly. Because I get, and I that's, get plenty that's of that a much, in my chat. And that's, exactly. It's, it's, and ugh. then there's also the science <laughs> communication based on press release. Oh, God, yeah. Like where people just take a press release at face value and report on it or talk about it without doing anything deeper, mm-hmm. especially when it's big news, like the whole phosphine thing on Venus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was, that was junk from the beginning. Yeah, that was like, like, No one believed that. I had to keep telling people, you know... <laughs> Like, I'm going to share this news because it's out there and you get the same thing. Yeah. You know, when there's big hype news. Everyone's like, let's talk about Venus. I'm like, why? This result is junk. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then like less than two weeks later, more papers came out and pointed out how the result was junk junk, because, but, 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 but that level requires like understanding the, the statistics and in the methodology of, of analyzing spectral lines and atmospheric it's so research much easier to planets be, yeah. is, is tough. That, that field is, it's, yeah, it's tough. And like when you read the paper and you see the choices that the uh, researchers made and how they were really, really bad choices to get a result that they wanted to be there. But then everyone else is like, well, it's a peer reviewed publication. So and that's everybody, everybody says that it's peer reviewed. Like, I don't feel like people I, understand uh, how peer review works and that that's not necessarily a gold standard of like or how ex- peer review doesn't work. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I'm actually uh, I'm writing a third book. I'm oh. under contract. Oh. It'll be out in the fall. And it's called A Sickness in Science, The oh. Problems with Modern Science and How to Fix Them. And I'm talking about. One of the things I talk about is is how peer review just doesn't mean nearly what you think it does. I, I, I wanted to show you this article. I saw this last night when I was in bed and it just pissed me off because it's it's from space.com. Hey, I write for them. I know you do. Look at this. Right. So you can see what they're doing here. So they're starting yep. to talk about the magnetic field. And this Magnetic is actually a very, fields. I know, it's what we always say, My you know. My favorite. Yeah, we just don't understand, so we just say magnetic fields. Magnetic fields. See, <laughs> see, I brought something to the world. <laughs> uh, that should be on a t-shirt. If you don't know the, if you don't understand something, the answer is magnetic fields. Absolutely. That should be another thing. We're just giving merch ideas. And by the way, I, I know you and I alone could do episodes of what your new book's going to be about. Just it's constant yes, it'll be because this kills yeah. me like to my core if there's anything that bothers me the most is when people come in they're like so yeah did you hear about uh you know roger penrose and his new uh, okay yeah you, you yeah and i'm like so he's a respected guy but you have to also understand he's also an older age and he's been he's been literally covered in this 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 is what i'm going to work on this is what i'm going to do at some point his mind might become a little bit more frail where he's not doing yes. great thinking yeah. anymore. Roger Penrose, amazing guy, brilliant guy, has not been relevant in physics for like 40 years. Yeah. He's been not just not relevant as in not productive. He has been on the margins because of his kooky ideas that nobody believes in. Yeah. I had to answer direct messages for people Oof. talking about this. Like people were DMing me and I'm like, okay, I don't have enough time to sit here and like one-on-one really explain to you that there's so many different, I mean, there's actually one bias that was coming through super strong there, but, um, so sky getting the forward in the new book. No, 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 no. Cause it would just be like, <laughs> it'd be like F bad science, you know? <laughs> like, Oh no, we'll have that on the cover. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be F star, 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 bad science quote Skylius. It, 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 she, she's on Twitch or whatever. <laughs> she's on Twitch or whatever that platform is. Yeah. It, it, but it, it's, it's that it's, thing. And it'll say in fine print, it's that thing that's like YouTube, but it's live stream. It's mostly for video <laughs> games, but she talks about science communication. It's actually really cool. No, 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 no. It's not like that in very small print yeah it's like right on the yeah it'll be it it will just make it so it looks aesthetically pleasing too yes 
Um, but no, but these are these are things that they I mean, I can't imagine how much you deal with it because you are on so many different avenues. Like you're on YouTube. I mean, you're you're dealing with this. I mean, you're also someone even came in there like, oh, this is the guy from the Netflix show. How the universe works. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, I'm you're that guy. You're that I... TV guy, too. So I was just uh, last week I was filming for Discovery Channel in Kennebunkport, Maine. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. How's Maine? I don't know why. How's Maine? Cold. Is it? it was an outside shoot. It was a beach shoot. Oh. It was that was freezing cold. The How things is... I do for science. Yeah. So so w- were they kind of like the same thing? Like, hey, Paul, we need you. I, we know you're freezing and you've been out here for a solid two hours, but we just need that little bit of energy from you. We just was it. Or are they actually a little bit? Uh. Uh, the crew was freezing cold too. Okay. So they're like, that's fine. And we'll accept yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. They were like, yeah, that's a great take. Paul. Yeah. That's great. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's great. That's, that's great. <laughs> that's, that, was, that, was, that was a good run, Paul. The let's, tides let's, let's, are from the moon and the earth's interaction. <laughs> um, what, yes. Man? Like I had to answer so many questions about conformal cyclic cosmology. And there are so many YouTube videos that came up about conformal cyclic cosmology. I'm like, it's like an old man's random crazy idea that yes, has interesting mathematical connections, but absolutely no relevance to the observable universe and actually doesn't connect with anything that we understand about modern cosmology. Right. Actually, uh, I mean, he put it way better than I ever would. All I could say was right to that because my brain <laughs> right is on. like, yeah, I'm just like, that's actually true. But very well said. And this is why we have Dr. Paul. Um, oh, yeah. And I'm on the Weather Channel. Oh, yeah, that's true. We... That is true. They are awesome. The Weather Channel are super cool. The producers are really good. They do a, a, actually a wide variety of topics. Um, Did you cover like, like, the was, new was... geomagnetic storm? Yes. Uh, but also, like, they just bring me on to talk about interesting space news just to break up the flow. Um, so I'm like the interrupter. Oh, okay. Of of their like, here's your weekend outlook, and then now China is returning lunar samples. Mm-hmm. And I come on, like I was on this morning, talking about uh, the Chinese lunar sample return mission. And you do it from this room, right here. That's nice. They they Skype me in. Oh. We don't have the Weather Channel here. Yeah, we've seen him on there a few times. We've seen uh. It's actually really cool, but it was actually uh, before. I mean, I mean, I think you still just always do it from here, right? I, I've always done it. Yeah. So I've moved, and right, as right, I've right, moved, right, right. Uh, that I've always painted a wall behind me as a chalkboard. So I've been doing it for a few years, ever since uh, 2017, ever since the eclipse. Yeah, yeah. And then now there's like a bunch of solar activity happening, which is cool. But yes. But at the same time, we just started a new solar cycle. Our sun's so weird. It's so finicky. Our son is uh, very temperamental, mm-hmm. very toddler. Because mm-hmm. we're like, you're, you're like, supposed to ease into this. And it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. And the last maximum. Right. Was terrible. Was actually was more like a minimum. Yeah, and now like, like we're just starting. And it's like straight to 11. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that flood video is wild. I assume that's what you're referring to, Paul. Oh, wait. Paul, a different Paul. Paul written here. Um, so, Paul. Pal. Yes. Uh, let's see. So Weather Channel is rocking the visualizations to massive kudos really to do. them for making huge concepts Big kudos possible. Kudos to oh, the Weather thanks. Channel. Not just because they named me their official space specialist. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes, right. And are there, are you working on more seasons of uh, How the Universe Works or? Yes, we filmed in the summer, which was hilarious. Filming with COVID is an interesting, interesting game. I bet. Uh, for for how the universe works, they put me in a giant like plexiglass box with the cameras poking through, and so all the crew was on one side and I was on the other, and um, that was just. And then what was most sad was like lunches, because we'd be on these in this giant room at like tables, twelve feet apart, being like, "How's it going? Your sandwich good over yeah. there?" Yeah. Bologna again? <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, it was very weird. Uh, I'm also the science consultant for how the universe works. So I do all the script fact checking. And 
Uh, so we're running through the final edits right now and it should be out at the end of January. Nice. That's really cool. That's awesome. Um, I'm trying to, there was another question, but I don't think I, I don't, did I copy and paste it? Uh, maybe I did. No, I didn't. I still have just the copy and paste of your book. Um, that's cool. There was a really cool one that was earlier and it, I don't remember it now, but someone asked about the wow signal. Oh, maybe. Do you want to talk um, about the wow signal? Wow. It was a random radio blip in the 1970s. Yeah. All right. It happened in Columbus. Weird things happen in Columbus, Ohio all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was just, we did, we have no idea what it was, what it, but it wasn't aliens. It never happened again in that part of the sky or any part of the sky. It was just a weird random radio blip. Like, yeah. See, even it. Gu you met Guppy too. Um, Guppy's in Australia and he said, Ohio, right. say no more. Yeah. There's a lot of people yeah, in here. Ohio, say no more. Yeah. Um, Ohio. Yeah. Cause I know John Michael Godier, he does a lot of, he interviews a lot of people with the yes. wow signal. He does. Yes. He's, Cause he's, it, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing that people that want to we'll know, keep coming back to. Oh yeah. And he, he knows. Tell it. me more about the wow signal. Yeah. Well, there's so. Oh there's, yeah, that and it like Oumuamua. Oh, mua, mua, oh god, and like that random one. asteroid near misses. Oh, I'm so sick of the Apophis one. I'm so oh. ready for that to just. Um, but people. The thing with all these asteroid near misses, yeah, is that now we have much bigger telescopes, right? We and that are capable of seeing even smaller things. So these kinds of small asteroids were flying by us all the time. They're just too small to detect. Right. But now that we can detect them, all of a sudden it's news. They're like an asteroid the size of a car. Mm. Uh, flew through the, the, an asteroid the size of a of a wheel of Parmesan flew by the Earth. An <laughs> asteroid the you know, just like no, all it's, these like it's the daily what is it? The Daily Express. Oh gosh. That one has like a dedicated uh and I think this is this is like the news. Um I'm 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 trying to look for it here. Uh sports showbiz news lifestyle. Would it be lifestyle? Probably. Uh life? Yeah. I'm I'm trying to see here. Um, cause we have an ongoing joke. Fengrush, uh, every time he wakes up in the morning, he's like, So I hear there's a new asteroid that's gonna crash into Earth exactly mm -hmm. yeah that's i don't even know it's, would it be under finance i don't know where this is sports probably i know <laughs> markets react oh it's actually under news there's science um oh my so this is like th this is actually okay this is terrible but see this is why you and i can just we could Man, I'm gonna sell this that book so hard. Book. You have no idea, Doctor Paul. Okay, yes. so I'm talking about I'm talking about the uh, persistence of fraud. I'm talking about the lack of careers in science. What? I'm talking about the this? horrible relationship between science and science journalism. Oh my God. Okay, so mysterious signal from sun's uh, nearest neighbor. So that's the Proxima Centauri yep. uh, Hubble photo. Thing. Uh, yeah, a, a neighbor could be from aliens. Scientists are baffled. ESA, is so the European Space Agency, snapshot of Mars reveals an angelic figure with a halo <sighs> uh, of the red planet. This is like normal news for people in the UK. Uh, but there's, yeah. there's a lot of people that are smart enough to be like, oh, this is we're doomed. Warning. And that's over why they moved out of the UK. Yeah. Warning. Yeah, we, over we declared independence for a reason. <laughs> warning over rogue black holes. Red coats. <laughs> It's NASA hunts missing space time. I didn't know space time was missing. Yeah, you know what? It was behind the couch cushions oh, all the time. Should have known. You, just, you know, things get down in there, and you're like, oh gosh. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to go. Okay. That oh, was man. super fast. I'm so I, I didn't is. even track time. I, I always lot. track time, and I didn't even track it. We're definitely over an hour. Oh my. What is time? Yes. Okay. We'll have you All back right. on soon. We'll do this yes. again soon. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do it. We'll do like a New Year's special. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I feel like we just like scratched the surface. Okay. So Dr. Paul and I haven't yep. seen each other since May. So guys, it's just been rough. It's okay. True. Okay. It's been rough. Well, thank you for hanging out and talking to absolutely. us. Absolutely. And thanks again for having me on. Everyone, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. All the rest. And don't die of an asteroid. Yes, please. Or space time missing. <clears throat> okay. There is that. Yeah.
All right. We should go looking for that. I know I'm going to go. That's on my item list. 